This video is being prepared before Christmas of 2023. A friend of mine noticed some preachers say that Jesus was sent by the Father, and some say that he was given by the Father. My friend wisely observed that being sent and being given are not the same, so he asked, which is correct? Christmas time is a great time to try to answer this question. The video title also mentions a controversy about Christmas. I've given my opinion in the description below this video. As we look at what the scriptures have to say about the Father sending or giving Jesus, hopefully we'll be able to answer our question, how should we now live in the 21st century? My quick answer is that it's not an either or, but a both and. A way to illustrate the idea of both and is to consider the life and death of a soldier. A country sends a soldier to protect the country's interests. If the soldier dies, we say the soldier gave her or his life to carry out the country's purpose. Jesus being sent slash given is much more precise, and the following will hopefully show us what I mean. Perhaps the most famous Old Testament verse predicting the coming of Jesus is Isaiah 9, 6, which says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Here we see that Jesus was given. In the New Testament, we find a verse in Romans 8 that tells us that God sent his Son. God did what the law could not by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful mankind on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That is the flesh of Jesus. God's Son mentioned here was the baby born that first Christmas. The following are five reasons why God sent his son. First, to speak to us. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says, God, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. So the first thing we see is that God sent Jesus to speak to us. Second, God sent his son to proclaim the coming kingdom. The ministry of Jesus started when he was about 30 years old. That first day, he went into the synagogue, took a scroll of the prophet Isaiah, and began to read it, the content of which tells us some of the reasons why the Father sent the Son. Then in Luke 4, starting verse 17, it says, And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he took the book and sat down, and with all eyes fixed on him, he said, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus was sent by the Father to preach, to heal, to proclaim, and to liberate. Third, the Father sent the Son to serve and to be an example. Mark 10 45 tells us that Jesus, while speaking to his disciples, said, The Son of Man does not come to be served, but to serve. And then in John 13 14, it says, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash each other's. And then verse 15, it says, for I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. Looking at the life of Jesus, we see how we should live. Remember, being a Christian means to follow Jesus Christ. Following him means to be more and more like him. That's a tall order, but don't despair. We all fail or fall at times. The key is not how many times we fall, but that we get up and continue following each and every time. Jesus was sent to serve those he created and to be our example of serving others. Next, the Father sent the Son to show the Father. Philip, who was one of the original 12, said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said to him, Have I not been with you so long, and yet you have not known me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. The fifth reason the Father sent the Son was to be God with us. Recorded in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. An angel speaking to Joseph says the following, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken 
by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin will be with child and will bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus was sent because he is our creator and was the only one that was able to do what he did. Not only was Jesus sent, but God the Father gave him to us. When you think of the Father giving the Son, it revolves around the idea of a gift given. There are at least four reasons God gave Jesus to us. Each one will reveal that Jesus is not a common gift, but the greatest gift ever given. Jesus was given to die. Romans 5, 6 through 8 says the following, But when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps a good man, someone might even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love towards us, in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to come. The second reason God gave Jesus was to be a ransom price. 1 Peter 1.18 tells us, Knowing that you are not redeemed with the corruptible things, like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Paul writing to Timothy says the following, There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The third reason God sent his son, John 3.16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. The fourth reason the father sent the son was to cleanse us. John, the apostle, wrote in one of his epistles, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. So why did the father give the son? First, to die for us. Second, to be a ransom price for us. Third, to give us everlasting life. And fourth, to cleanse us. That brings us to how should we now live in the 21st century? If we accept the truth of all the verses presented, then 2 Corinthians 9.15 helps us answer our question when it says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. If this video has been a blessing, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and press the like button. Also, please tell others, I thank you for all of your help. Because Jesus was sent and given, may the resurrected Jesus fill our hearts and our minds and our lives. Amen.